a whole lot of there from Jamie Foxx to like Denzel Washington. I yeah. like the in public, you feel me? I like for them <laughs> to see how I fuck. like you speak yeah. to Joe to see or puff you and any of them. Yeah. They've been at my house, they all see me. Fuck. Aaron Hall is a name that many 90s kids remember. And like many singers, Aaron has had his fair share of controversies. Given his explosive temperament, Hall was making headlines quite often, and not in a good way. I took her! Me and Gloria's cool. I'm a boss. I ain't gonna argue with you about no shit and you umbilical cord bitch. Despite his musical talents, Aaron is most known as the R. Kelly number two, if you know what I mean. His name frequently found itself entangled in discussions surrounding high-profile scandalous affairs, overshadowing his musical prowess with the shadows of controversy. I was actually in the studio when he recorded that. You we just started dating. You are lying. I swear to God, I was 16. In his latest interview, the I Miss You singer recounted his cringy endeavors, inadvertently revealing his true association with Puff Daddy. Let's delve into the chilling intricacies of Aaron's career that will unveil some truly disturbing secrets of the entertainment industry. The Caribbean-American singer Aaron Hall has become the center of attention following his explosive interview with DJ Vlad. During the session, Aaron seized the opportunity to boast about his prowess in the bedroom boldly asserting that there was no B who didn't desire to engage in intimate encounters with him. A whole lot of girls out there with the umbilical cords, them young 1970s, 1980s b****s. Yeah. You know what I mean? They try to go up there with the, you know, with the fresh out the b****s and sh As the interview progressed, Hall's claims got progressively worse. He had the galls to claim that his privates were worshipped by the female population. They f*** with me or something. <laughs> That's right. If That's they f*** with me, if they f*** with me, it's a big Everybody know my son's mother. Everybody know that sh As cringy as it is to listen, it is important to remember that Aaron had been unashamedly obnoxious since the beginning. In his bedroom godlike speech, he dropped a bomb that shook the entire industry. You see, Aaron alluded that he and Diddy have a very close relationship, to the point that he would often take the girls right in front of him. Yeah. I like for them <laughs> to see how I f Like, if you speak yeah. to Joe to see or puff you or not, any of them yeah. they've been at my house, they all see me f they all know I'm a big Indeed, it has been widely whispered that Diddy has been hosting adult-oriented gatherings for an extended period. Given Aaron Hall's unabashed claims, it certainly raises the intriguing possibility that he may have been a frequent attendee at such events. Moreover, after listening to Aaron, you might have already realized that he is actually very much of a S fanatic. Now with a mindset like that, it is no wonder why Aaron's name comes up in many SA scandals. So I just went there and just grabbed her hand! and went inside the hotel and yeah. gave it to her. You feel me? It might shock you to know that Aaron does not believe in dating and pursuing women. He has openly admitted that he assesses a woman's value by the fact if she can satisfy him and better not. A whole lot of niggas write about taking girls out to shop, taking girls to fly to Dubai and all that shit. Just close your eyes, we anywhere. Fans believe that Aaron is the textbook example of toxic masculinity. One of them commented, What in the entire F did he say? What man in his right mind admits to two other dudes witnessing him have S? As a black woman who happens to be a mother to a 23-year-old son, I'm embarrassed and ashamed by this type of display of masculinity, if you can call it that. Another pointed out that his derogatory language has effectively eliminated any respect the fans had for him. Listening to this was very disturbing. I really had fond memories of him in the group guy and the times that they appeared on Bet with Donnie Simpson. At that time, he stuttered a lot, so maybe it's to cover up the impediment. I also agree. 30 years of the respect I had for him thrown away in 2 minutes and 48 seconds. The plot takes a sickening turn as Aaron proudly announces that he'd had his way with Gloria Velaz without much consent. However, what makes this revelation even more disturbing is the presence of prominent figures like Fat Joe and other influential names at the scene who seemingly stood by and did nothing to protect Velaz. Aaron boasted that she had just started dating a Jamaican rapper, but once he laid eyes on her, he took her by the arm and had his way with her for, quote, days to come. Big Pun, Fat Joe, Method Man, like, like whoever you speak to, just ask them how I did it. I got out the limo, grabbed the hand, went upstairs and f***ed her. Paul excused his behavior by saying that he and Gloria are cool. It is rather disgusting to hear Aaron parade around explaining his deranged acts as trophies. You can clearly hear how proud he is about the things he has done. I took her! Me and Gloria's cool. We got cool in two weeks. You feel me? I'm a boss. I ain't gonna argue with you about no shit. You umbilical cord bitch. To bring things into perspective, you should know that when this all happened, Gloria was only 16 years old, barely a teenager. In a separate interview, Gloria dished the details. She said, Aaron Hall. I was actually in the studio when he recorded that. You we are, just started dating. You are lying. I swear to God, I was 16. It was, <laughs> it was a lot different. 
Later on, the Bronx-born musician stated that he didn't even say anything to Gloria to entice her to come upstairs with him since he had a speech impediment at the time. He explained that every guy was after her at the time, but so many were afraid to actually approach her, which is why he stepped to her full of confidence and swiftly took her to his room. Three days after their encounter, Aaron recalled Gloria getting Aaron's tattooed right above her private part. He stated that he has nothing but love for her despite their drama-filled past, due to the fact that she gave birth to his son. The biggest takeaway from this incident was that Hall had the tendency to manipulate underage girls into being obsessed with him. Gloria had tattooed Aaron's right above In her. black, red, and green. Right above her vagina. Right above it with perfect with a parenthesis with an S. Right. Aaron's. You might be thinking why was Hall not held accountable for his misconduct? Well, in the very next second, Aaron claimed that he was not aware of Velaz's age at the time. If you ask us, it is quite apparent that Hall added this part so that he wouldn't get in trouble later. Gloria didn't do no bad thing to me. I thought she was older. You feel what I'm saying? Sometimes I see a puppy on the field when I'm doing dog training. I think it's a year old or two years old, and it'd be like eight months. So I don't know. Although Aaron was able to escape the consequences of his action in Velaz's case, karma soon caught him when he allegedly raised his hands to hurt one of his ex-girlfriends. Back in 1996, Hall pleaded guilty to attacking his ex-girlfriend and was sentenced to five years of probation. A few years later, he was ordered to undergo two years of anger management training, but when he failed to show up for one of the sessions, with Aaron claiming he was delayed while traveling to witness the birth of his son, he wound up serving 11 months in Rikers Island. After the incident hit the mainstream media, Media, Gloria took the opportunity to speak up against the injustice she had unknowingly faced in her formative years. She called Aaron out for being a deranged creep for having a relationship with her in her teen years. On top of that, Velaz clapped back, accusing him of hurting her and labeling him as a deadbeat dad who has never contributed to the care of their child. She said, quote, Aaron was abusive toward me, and I'll be damned if I'll put my son through that. There were days I couldn't go outside. I was so beat up. He can get lawyers involved. Hall, of course, has denied the abuse and says all attempts at child support were turned down. He claimed that Velez wanted to keep his son away from him. I've seen the DVDs and everything. I haven't seen my son in six years. Why would I not want to see my son Aaron? My first son died. That's why I did the video, I miss you. I haven't seen Aaron the fourth in six years. Let me see my son. I walked up to Jay-Z, Ja Rule, I'm the realest you'll ever meet, and said, why don't you tell Gloria to let me see my son? In the wake of Gloria's accusations, another name was added to Hall's essay list. The word on the street claims that Patra exited the music industry after Hall had allegedly violated her. Although nothing has been proven, the majority of the public holds the rumor to be true. In an interview with Vibe magazine, she alluded that she took a long break from music because she went through something traumatic. She said, quote, Yeah, what happened was I was taking a break to get my career on track. It's very simple. I just wanted to be in control, finish my education, and just to be happy. That's basically it. There's nothing really dramatic to discuss. I just needed to take that break to get myself and things together in order to be in control of my own business. To me, that is the most refreshing thing I was able to accomplish from my absence from the scene, is to be in control of my stuff. Some conspiracy theorists suggest that Aaron may have forced himself upon her, and when she allegedly refused, Aaron got violent with her. Quote, It astounds me the number of abusive R&B cats we've heard about over the years. Brian McKnight, Joe, Aaron Hall, R. Kelly, Chris Brown, anyone else? How do you go from singing about making love and worshipping a woman's body to punching a woman square in her eye? Then again, it makes good sense. They probably learned to perfect their craft by singing love tunes to women after they just finished whooping their ass. Over the years, people have pointed out that Aaron had always been a jerk when it came to women. You see, most of his songs portray his pleasure when he violently dominates his muse. It won't be wrong to say that Aaron essentially glorified S.A. One of his hit songs, Don't Be Afraid, is the embodiment of questionable narration. The lyrics of the song read, quote, No need to run and no need to hide. All the doors are locked, baby, and I have you inside. You can yell and you can hit me. It just makes me more horny, end quote. Someone needs to call the authorities because it seems like there is a beast on the loose. In the past, it used to be every teenager's favorite song. It simply shows how cleverly the music industry incorporates twisted concepts into our culture by using beats as crutches. If you think about it, these songs desensitize the people and inadvertently normalize inhumane crimes. Our culture includes jokes, TV, 
music, advertising, legal jargon, laws, words, and imagery that makes violence against women and S coercion seem so normal that people believe that R is inevitable. Rather than reviewing the culture of R as a problem to change, people in a R culture think about the persistence of R as just the way things are." End quote. The point is that violence against women has long been normalized in society. This culture breeds beasts like Hall who are a menace to society in more ways than one. Coming back to the song Don't Be Afraid was an R-rated catchy tune that you could dance to. In the music video, Aaron Hall, mostly dressed in a suit, tie, and a pinky ring, sang about serious crimes in front of a city backdrop, while four women wearing cross-colors clothing danced around him in that bouncy late 80s slash early 90s hip-hop style. The song was very reflective of the New Jack Swing era, which began to merge traditional R&B soul singing with the grittier hip-hop sampling and aesthetic. Those elements together made for the perfect cover to hide such ambiguous lyrics like, quote, the lyrics are off and I close the shades, so kiss me baby I say. Say one more time for the road baby, I'm rising again. Give me a sedative baby, don't be afraid. So not only are the doors locked, thus trapping the poor girl inside, but the lights are off too, which makes it impossible for our heroine in this story to see from which direction her attacker is coming. To be honest, we can really see the personality of Aaron in the lyrics. Now even R. Kelly's comparisons make sense. Apart from these allegations, it is important to discuss that Aaron did not have a good relationship with his bandmates. You see, Hall and Riley had been friends since childhood. They formed Guy in 1987 and signed with Uptown Records, the original home of Mary J. Blige, and a hustling intern named Sean Combs. After making just two classic LPs, 1988's Guy and 1990's The Future, Guy split up. The fallout was permanent, however. They did try to reunite in 1993, but things didn't work out. After a while, Aaron opened up about the slip, revealing that two alphas cannot be in the same pack. He said, quote, It was never a falling out. Me and Damien don't talk bad about Riley. The Hall brothers are focused. Riley just always tried to be in control of everything, and it never happened. You can be in control of Blackstreet if you want, but you will not be in control of Guy. I just told him, Teddy, we was raised up around each other, dog. We owe this to the fans. He's seen I changed and I wasn't nuts. But over the years, their relationship has been deteriorating. You see, Aaron alluded that Teddy was talking about him behind his back like a coward. I'm, I'm, I mean, like square <laughs> try to say some square <laughs> sh behind <laughs> you can say Aaron Hall's a diva. It's evident that Aaron's frustration with Teddy went beyond mere annoyance, as he chose to label Teddy as nothing less than an infection. I ain't gonna say nothing about anybody because square <laughs> got a infection on him already, you feel me? That's so right. real street see it already. He had that square infection. We know that where Aaron had the vocal cords, Riley had the brains. Fans are calling out Hall over social media claiming that he had no right to treat Riley like that. One of them commented, quote, It's really sad to see this. Guy will always be probably my favorite R&B group, even with those three albums. This is why I tried to only have an association to the artist. Aaron is an amazing and blessed singer, and I will love those songs forever. But he seems like a horrible human. If Teddy didn't produce, write, and play on Groove Me, Goodbye Love, I Like, and all these joints, would we know who Aaron Hall is? Not only that, Aaron has brazenly put all the blame on Riley as he claimed that Riley was the reason the guys' reunion was not successful. He said, It's all on Teddy. Me and Damien will do whatever. We don't have the control problem. Teddy is a genius in the studio, but you can't control something unless you're better. You can't tell the fans you're the leader of Guy and go on stage without me. See what they'll say. See what the reporters say. Sing all the songs yourself. I can sing all the songs by myself, but I don't. He can't sing Let's Chill, Goodbye Love, Peace of My Love, nothing. I can sing I Like, a cappella, and the audience will go crazy. Some of the fans claim that Aaron is trying to undermine Riley's work when they were in the band. You can't diss Teddy. Teddy is a prime example of hard work, sobriety, and perseverance. If that's called being a square, then I'd rather be a square than a washed up singer with a cane. Teddy is credited for over 700 songs. He gets a check more times than you blink per day. Think about that. Like many other artists, Aaron Hall has been a part of many different controversies, but his recent interview suggests that he and R. Kelly might have more in common than just appearance.